All right, all right, all right. Good morning, mid-morning to all of you. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Please come in, take a seat. We are not going to be long, but we have something, just a query, a question, a reminder uh, that we need to do. So welcome, welcome, welcome to PowerScope. Good morning to you. Nice to have you. Hi, hi, hi. I am a little uh, challenged today with these eyes. I'm not in my regular space, so I'm still kind of straining and looking to see you guys. Good morning to you, madame. Good morning to you, sir. Wonderful. Good to have you all on today. We're going to be very, very brief, very, very short, but I want to invite you into PowerScope. Uh, I'm uh, excited about news, excited about some things that are going on. So I needed to ask one question, just one. Good morning to you. <laughs> Thank you. It is my anniversary and I have 15 minutes. So you all, <laughs> you all have to come in. My husband said you have five, 10, 15 minutes to do what you need to do. And then you, I'm cutting you off. So thank you all for coming quickly, quickly, quickly. I have 15 minutes. He will not let me be on here today uh, very long, but I had to, I have a deadline uh, that I need to share with you. I have something very important to ask of you. And so I had to have 15 minutes. So he has been very considerate and kind. <laughs> thank you so very much. It is wonderful to the Netherlands. Hello. Good evening to you guys. Uh, you're coming into the end of the day. So blessings to you in that region. So glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 33 and 2. 3 and 2. 32 years. How does this happen? <laughs> How does this happen that you can be married? Oh, you are so kind. The doctor's in the house. Valdosta, Georgia, good to have you. Yes, yes, yes. Three decades and two years. Isn't that a long time to be with the same person? And yet God arranged it. So let me say that right off the cuff. Uh, I did hear God very clearly say, uh, he said to me these words, and I really want to share them with you since you've asked. I wouldn't have shared them otherwise. But this is what the Lord said. He said, because you have loved me, Yolanda, with your full heart. I was a college student. I used to get in my closet every day and pray forever and ever uh, to the Lord. I wanted him so bad. And over a, a, a period of time, a couple of years, the Lord said, now that you have loved me with your whole heart, I'm going to give, put my heart and my love for you into one of my sons, and I'm going to love you back through him. <laughs> that was God's promise to me over 32 years ago. And so he has kept his promise. He literally put his heart and love for me into one man and said, this is uh, your bride and you are to care for her as I would. And uh, my husband, my pastor, my friend, my ace boom coon, my bae before it was bae, we were saying B-A-E, before anyone was saying that 30 years ago. So we actually started Bay. <laughs> so my Bay, we started that so long ago. And so it's been 32 years. And I asked him to get on the scope today, but he is not like, you know, a forward kind of, he's like in the background. He's my, my tools. He's my screws. He's my bolts. He actually holds to, uh, it together. Uh, and so he is the one that sustains literally the, the power of my life. And I thank God for that. Uh, I think one of the pro uh, prophetic words that we received was that he, uh, I want to make sure, I, can you guys hear me? All right. I wanted to make sure that you guys hear me because I'm in some, we're, we're actually uh, somewhere in Pennsylvania, I believe for our anniversary. We got to see Samson yesterday here at the Sight and Sound uh, Theater. It was awesome. Uh, so we've got the things planned today. So we're excited about that. Uh, but what I was saying was, you know, these 32 years ago, he, God has just done what he has promised. He's kept his promise. Uh, marriage is honorable. Holy matrimony is possible. Uh, but you got to have not two people. Let me say this to those that are still unmarried. You cannot have two people. You must have in a kingdom marriage. You must have three. <laughs> it is the power of three. So in heaven, the power of three sustains one God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And in the earth, if you're going to be married, you cannot have two. It is not a dual relationship. It is a triple relationship. It is Christ 
and the husband and the wife. If it is not three, all right, am I talking? If it is not three, then it does not have the kind of making. Yeah, yeah, you must. If you are in a in a in a relationship with a person, it has to be three if it's going to be a kingdom marriage, if it's going to have marital power, if it's going to have sustaining life, it has to be the power of three. Uh, it's always going to be that way. God did it. And so uh, our marriage piece uh, comes actually out of the Old Testament that says a threefold cord is not quickly broken. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. And, and so here, you know, the writer uh, is talking very clearly that two can do a lot of things. Two got some power. Two can fight together. Two can be warm together. Two can walk together. Two can do a lot of things. But if if it's going to be sustaining, if it's going to have power, if it's going to have longevity, if it's going to really do the real work, it's got to be a threefold cord because it's not quickly broken. It's not easily torn apart. All right. So that's it. So thank you so much for, for the anniversary blessings. Let me just share what God told me to share with you guys. We're still in our word power week. So I want to be able to ask one question. And this question is a very serious question. Uh, we've been starting this week about about catalyst, the word power, catalyst, bringing change. Yesterday, we talked about the negative side or that thing that the enemy tries to steal our words when they are negative, when we are not saying the right thing at the right time, when we are whispering, backbiting, the enemy uses, the, he inverts the word power and the power that should be creating, the power that should be framing, the power that should be moving with velocity and speed is now tearing. It is now rending. It is now breaking. It is now dividing. So we have to be good managers and masters of the word of God. we got to know how to judge people properly what comes out of the vault, the vault, the vault, not the, the vault. It is a vault, but it's a vault of the treasury of God. All right. So I want to make sure uh, that we understand it as we go into today's really short sharing uh, about uh, framing. Do you have framing, watch this, framing power, framing ability uh, that will sustain words that have framing. That means they can frame like you frame a house, like you frame a picture. Do your words have framing anointing, framing ability? And we're going to learn just quickly how that happens today. And so I'm going to throw that really quick. Thank you so much for happy anniversaries. You all are blessing me uh, with that. Uh, this framing ability to sustain, do you have the framing force and sustaining ability in your vocabulary, in your dictionary, in your lexicon? Are you able to amass enough words that will speak positively, potently, that will speak with penetration, that will speak with activation, that will speak with authority? That's what we're really working on, all right, in our lives uh, today. And so I really, really want you to get this. You have to turn with me quickly to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And if you don't have Bible, then really listen because you really need to see it and hear it uh, together. These words are really p uh, powerful and potent. Uh, these are the words that were framed uh, by the apostles, by the writers of the New Testament. Many don't know if it was uh, the Hebrews are written by Paul as the apostle or not. So we're not getting into biblical discourse on that. I'm just saying it is canonized. It is the word of God. It is giving us insight and revelation. It is sharing mystery with us. So we need to be able to come comprehend that so that we can activate it. Comprehension precedes activation. If you don't comprehend it, then you can't understand it. Then you cannot do it and implement it. So I, you, you know, I'm, a, I'm an apostolic teacher. I'm always trying to make sure that words, because I understand we are framed by words. We are made by words. We were spoken and developed by words and everything in the cosmos is the same. Uh, God Barah, he created us through power power of words. He said, this is universe. This is sun. This is light. This is moon. And they came into being by the power of the spoken word. So we got to know what that looks like. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to really get that clear uh, and get, so I want you to, I want you to tap this out. I want you to tap this. I have force to frame, force frame, just hashtag force frame. 
hashtag force frame. I want you to hashtag it because I want you to remember that this force framing ability is spoken. This force framing ability is uttered. This force framing ability is, is, is spoken and communicated and articulated out of the, of the, of the military and, 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 and powerful might of the mouth. So listen, what I'm saying to the body of Christ is we want to be powerful. We want to see change. We want to, to see movement in the earth. We've got to do better with our mouth because that's where all the treasure, all the artillery, all the paint, all the color, all the, everything is in here. Now we just had incident um, with the with the new killing of an African American male who was in the car with his with his fiance and I believe his baby. And we see an officer literally while he is reaching for his gun. I mean, reaching for his wallet. The man, the police, takes the gun and shoots him. I believe four times. Now, as I'm listening to that this morning is why I jumped on this scope with you is because I need us as the body of Christ to understand how do we intercept the evil that has been unleashed and let me say, or released against males, African-American males, people of color, whatever you want to say, we're in what I'm seeing as a resurgence of of evil that is historic. In other words, hear me what I'm saying, what we're contending with is the movement of old words that have come back out of the ground, out of the trees of lynching, out of the out of the familiarity of this of, of division of color in this country, and it will take not just legislation, not just gun control, not just somebody talking uh, in a mic or some politician talking in a camera. It's going to take the power, the framing power, the sustaining force of the body of Christ to take authority over the words that have been released and released against humanity. Now, I'm really serious about this, guys. I'm standing in the mirror trying to get my little self together for my husband today, and this apostolic boom just comes upon me. The Spirit of the Lord says, you all don't know how to frame and force and sustain power over the things that have been spoken against humanity, over, uh, over against Americans of color, people who are African American, people who are African descendants had words of hatred, words of, of murder, words of enslavement, and then those words were followed with activity or action. It was activated. Boats came, took us off the continent, brought us to a new land. Then they were spoken. You will be slaves. You will always be in, in, in second class citizenship. Even when the sixties came, that did not change. Words were enacted. Words were put in place by government, but they couldn't change the framing that had already sealed the picture and put it in glass and put gold and silver around it until you when I break it, we have the ability to recreate that which was released to recreate. So we've got to do better with how do we change historic words, historic framing of pictures against African-American males. The spirit of lynching is very real in this country. We cannot just forget that it happened and think that civil rights legislation is going to change that. There has to be now a, a, a an organized corresponding movement of prayer chains, of intercession chains, of spoken word movement against the spirit that is now resurrecting and bringing resurgence to something that was never handled. It was never killed. It was never destroyed. It was never murdered. So every now and again, it gets new win. Every generation has a new win. 40 years later, 80 years later, 120 years later, it has new resurgence. It has new empowerment to come back with stealth and nobody can understand it. We thinking, oh, it's just white folk hate black folk. Okay, that may be true, but what is the spirit? 
behind it. Lord, I had 15 minutes. And see, I done gone crazy. My husband going to get me because now I done gone into all kind of places. I need to pull it back. But this is, I just need to get this to somebody who can run with it today because I'll go back and do this later. But I need you to get this today. We need to organize a very clear framing force and sustaining power against historic words. That's what I'm saying. That's how things are created and that's how things will be handled. We cannot just be spiritual minded and no earthly good. We've got to be able to bring elements out of the realms into the reality of mankind right here. That's apostolic prophetic movement. That's what we have the power to do. That's what the seven mountains is all about. Why we need to be on the government mountain. Why do we need to be in the family mountain? Why do we need to be in the education mountain? Because we are the only ones packing with word power to take authority over evil word power. Righteousness over evil. That's what we're contending with. And it's right here. It's right here. It's right in our mouth to be able to command, to declare, to decree, to pull out, to completely annihilate, to assassinate the words that have been sent from hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years to black men, African men, men of African ascent in this country. We have that authority. So I don't know. Maybe we're going to do this. Maybe I can unpack this a little bit when we get into the seven mountains piece that I'm doing on July 30th. I need to remind you that we are meeting together. That is going to be a very stealth time. It is going to be a download time. It is going to be impartation time. She said, wow, you are blowing my mind. I know I'm blowing my mind. Listen, God, I was in the bathroom, seriously talking to nobody, listening, just doing my little eyebrows and trying to get myself together for my husband. And all of a sudden I hear the newsman talk about it. And I'm saying, wait a minute. So we got an, okay, another killing. Wait, God. And all of a sudden, seriously, it just revelation, mystery start to unpack. God said, you, God has, you guys haven't handled this. You haven't handled this because this is what you haven't done. You haven't gone back and eradicated. Erad I'm talking about apostolic, prophetic people. I'm not talking about anybody. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you who are kingdom leaders, market place ministers, global gatekeepers, key influencers, those who I'm talking to. I'm not talking to everybody else. I'm not talking about Sally Jones sitting on the pew at the little church down the road. I'm not talking about light bulb Baptist. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean to call no names. Light bulb uh, community. I'm, I'm not talking about denominations because there are people with power in every denomination. I am saying those of you who understand the power of the spoken word, the power of intercessory, watch this, penetration, the ability to go into dark realms, and to take the neck of the enemy, to pull down the Bini Elohim, to take authority over those mountains and those things that have been moving and shaking, that have been imparting to men and saying to men, you can rule other men. You can take lives of other people. See, we got to deal with that. All right. So let me calm down. Here is Hebrews chapter 11, verse one. It says this now faith is the substance. Here it is. Hebrews chapter 11, verse one through three. And then we're done. All right. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So the, 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 the word of the Lord, the apostolic revelation here is that faith is a very important substance. Now we have seen the movement of faith. We've talked about word of faith. We know that there's been denominational kind of movements and tribal movements among the body to have faith, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a faith that is beyond this world, that is the substance of what moves God. God, that is the evidence of things that is invisible to the human eye. That's what I'm talking about. And it says by this, by this faith, by this revelation of faith, the elders of old received a good report. In other words, once those that are natural in the earth, natural men that take on spiritual revelation, begin to connect with God, then he says, now you're packing. Now we can do something. Now we can take down certain things. 
What I'm saying to you is that has happened before in history. We are now to be history makers. Hashtag history makers. Tap, 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 tap. History makers. You and I cannot watch evil proliferate in popular culture and not grab hold to faith out of another realm with some substance and some evidence that nobody else can see and handle it. It is what Dr. Martin Luther King and those who were foot soldiers in the 60s did when they began to deal with Jim Crow. They understood that Jim Crow was a creation of something that had no, no, no figurative. Uh, it was figurative. It had no literal substance. They could not tap it. And so what they had to do was go into a realm of faith. That's all they had. They had no guns. They had no bows and arrows. They had no ability. But they, they tapped into Hebrews at chapter 11, verse 1. And when they did, the, 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 the literary uh, bibliographies of all of these men, women, and, and, and children, young people, begin to tell us that they would say, ain't nobody going to turn us around, turn us around, turn us around. Oh, ain't nobody going to turn us around, going to keep on a walking, keep on a talking, walking down Freedom Road. And when they did that, ladies and gents, there was a faith substance. They couldn't see it. They didn't understand it, but it began to release a faith. Oh, what is that? All the demons said, wait, hold up. What happened? Because as they began to sing and decree and declare words, 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 the power force, the framing force of freedom and liberation came out of that substance. That's what I'm saying to you. And we've got to rekindle not just the same model. We don't need the same model. We need a new model, but the same principle. The principle is faith. And that's what he goes on to say in verse three. He says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were created. Mm, they were framed. They were framed and created and brought to be what by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear period period that revelation right there that will take us right into the streets right into the police station right into Capitol Hill right into the spirit of this thing not the men not the women not the it's deeper than that it's deeper than that. And so what I'm saying to you today in my now 20 minutes or so, oh Lord, I got to tell you that we've got to rethink. So I need you. This is your, this is your, this is your thought. This is your thought for tonight. I can, I can reframe history. I can be a history maker. I can reframe. I have framing force. I have sustaining power. I can change certain things. I can, I can reinvent certain things. I can bring back certain things. I can annihilate certain things with my mouth. But listen, when that is times a, a 10 or times 50 or times a hundred or, or times a massive movement that's organized and massive, uh, a deliberate force that is combined because what they said in the 60s when the writers began to write, they said, we've never seen anything like it. When these people, these black people, these Africans of, of African descent began to march through Selma and march, they said that even Bull Connor had dogs and hoses. They said that when they got to such a crescendo in their faith that they knew it was time for a change. They knew it was time for freedom. They knew it was time for Jim Crow to die. They knew he had to be beheaded. He had, now y'all know I'm violent. He had to be beheaded. He had to be killed. That thing, that spirit, they gave him a name. His name was Jim Crow. And they dealt with Jim Crow, not just through civil rights legislation. He first fell through faith. He fell through faith, through the words that were released out in the atmosphere of Selma and Montgomery and upon that bridge. That All of the blood, all of that happened because they understood. You can't stop me now. We are getting ready to change this. We're getting ready to do this. We're getting to move. And the kids, the dogs would be coming for the kids and coming for the elders. And they said, this is historic fact. Look it up. That it's, at one point, the dogs went to bite and could not bite. At one point, the hoses, the police were holding the hoses against them and the water stopped. I'm talking about supernatural movement, supernatural overtake of hatred, supernatural takedown of evil. I'm 
saying that we still have that in our bellies resident in the African American experience. Apostle Axel talks about this as a German man understanding what he has seen in America and what he has seen among African believers in this country, that there is a resident spirit of faith that when we all agree, don't talk, don't stop talking crazy. When we all talk the same, when we all believe that God going to change this, oh, it's going to change. Hear me what I say. All right. So I want to bless you today with that. You have the power to frame a framing force, a sustaining power to make a difference in history right now. You and I have that power. All right. So listen, I got to run. My husband just walked in and he's looking at me crazy. Like, what are you doing? I'm trying to tell him I'm changing history. I'm trying to be a history maker, honey. That's what I'm trying to do. So, all right, I've got to go. Reminder scope. You have to 12 noon to send me a two minute video telling me why you need to be on those seven mountains. Stop delaying. We're getting some in, but I know many of you have been halted between two opinions. Stop it. You have authority in your mouth. You have power in your mouth. You have framing force. You have sustainability. I need you in DC with me on, on July 30th. It's a Saturday. It's all day long of penetration, a powerful movement of historic, of a historic past. And watch this and a, a, a mighty military future, a mighty governmental future. So I need you to be there with me. If you cannot afford it, then let me pay for it. Let me take the cost. I'll pick the winners. I'll have you in the room. And right. And if you're in business, write it off as your taxes. If you're in ministry, tell your ministry to send you because you need to be on those seven mountains with Dr. Yolanda Powell on Saturday, July 30th. All right. I love you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for our nation and I am using my mouth like a weapon. I am using my weapon like a gangster. I am legislating with liberation this country and every oppressed people because that's who we are supposed to be in Christ, not just church goers. We're to be mountain movers. We're to change the trajectory of evil. We are to take down principalities. We are to take over systems. We are to release justice and righteousness in Jesus name. All right. Blessings to you. I love you. We will talk to you later. We will do whatever we need to do to get you here. We bless you. We command you. We call you. We say, come here and sit down VIPs. We need some time together. July 30th, 2016 here in the Washington DC area. All right. Blessings to you. Just go to powerspeaklive.com come and register today. All right. Love you. Thank you for your anniversary blessings. And we will talk with you 